Well, this is the Cessna 172 and definitely cold and dark. First of all, we have to turn on the power. As you can see, we have some power coming through. And down here, there is a button that you can press and then that turns on the overhead lights. To turn on the computer, just push that button right there. Just that simple. And that's it. It has started up. One thing I have done is I brought the monitors in so that they're close together on the sides to give a more surround feel to it. Now before the flight and starting up prepared 3D you need to check a couple of things. First of all on the instrument panel the brake light should be on and down here is the brake. So that's off, that's on. So that needs to be on. The mixture needs to be pulled all the way out and the throttle all the way out. And down here on the switch panel this should be turned all the way to the left to be off. This needs to be off. All of these also need to be in the off position before going in. And on the instruments, all the instruments should be live. If not, there is a procedure which I will explain at a later time on how to get those back. And essentially it involves unplugging and replugging in USBs that connect it. The other thing that we need to do is to make sure that the trim wheel is in the neutral position and the gear lever, the uh, sorry, the flap lever is in the up position. So this is how to get everything ready for starting. Now we'll go in and start P3D. Now to start P3D, there is an icon on the desk that says Prepared 3D V4. Click on that with the mouse. One time is all that's needed, and then it starts up. When it gets into the startup procedure, these will all switch from the default SciTech Logitech screen, and they will assume the positions and the dials of each of the instruments. There they go. And you saw the flash on the radios that indicates that there's a start. Now to get this across the top, this option bar, just use that alternate button. Tapping it will bring it up. Tapping and holding will remove it. Now this is the basic screen that starts. And obviously it is not uh, properly aligned for this simulator. So you go to the middle of this screen here with the mouse and right click 
left click on cockpit, go down and select Cessna 172. And then everything changes to be in the proper position. I don't know if you can see it from this angle, but there's traffic on the roads in the background. There's a, a little bit of light snow on the ground. And here's the access road, the taxiway that will take us to get onto the active runway. And we'll have a look at the airport plates to show you where all of that is. Let's have a look top down and see where we are here because we're going to match this now with the maps and the charts. So outside, right click first of all on the screen, left click on outside and then left click on top down and it shows that we are right there. Now I'm going to zoom in and there we are. This is where the airport, uh, where the aeroplane is located. Now if I zoom out, now you can see the rest of the airport, the main runway, and where we are in relationship to it. Here is the map properly oriented, and this is a close-up of the chart. You can see where we are on the chart. But to see where we are on Google Satellite Map, this is a screenshot I took, and as you can see, this is where the aircraft is actually parked. We're at General Aviation Parking Stand 15 in P3D. That means if you were to go and choose Exeter Airport and then want a location on the airport, so you would choose EGTE and then look for parking stand 15 and that would put you right here where you can see the arrow pointing on this Google satellite map. Well that brings us to the end of this little section. In the next section we will have a look at some of the options available to us in the simulator. Okay?